One month, just one month left until E3 2017. Ah, who knows what amazingly disappointing things we'll discover. Well, hopefully none, but you never can tell with E3. So to kick this off, I just want to start out by saying that this is not a wish list, but rather what I personally fully expect to see based on my own general experiences and feelings on current industry trends. So with that out of the way, let's get on with the predictions. I'll start with the big three first, and first up, Microsoft. Obviously we're going to see a lot of the not yet named but probably will be at this event Scorpio, no doubt with the actual console box being revealed with all of its features and so on. But honestly, other than that, I don't really expect all that much. So just for laughs, I thought I'd start out by predicting what I expect Microsoft to say during their unveiling. Knowing Microsoft's smug self-important attitude, I expect the event to be ridiculously over the top. I imagine a dark room littered with every green laser they could get their hands on, the consoles slowly rising out of the floor to epic music, an overabundant use of smoke machines and of course even more green lasers. I expect Phil Spencer's smug punchable face in the distance, leering at the machine with solid gold dollar symbols popping out of his eyes, and to top it all off. Bill Gates will fly in on a chrome and emerald rocket chair to hang a banner over the stage declaring all of the gaming platforms dead. Okay, okay, I kid, of course. I'm sure Phil Spencer's eyes will be platinum, not gold. Now, the conference itself will be lined with the most generic statements of all time, such as, as they were meant to be played, the absolute best way to experience, emphasis on absolute best, that's important, and the only way to play. Oh, and don't forget to throw in the words power, true 4K and a few teraflops here and there for good measure and you've got a genuine Microsoft press event. But after all that, they'll eventually remember that they'll need something to actually push the console. Something that'll be able to showcase its awesome power. So I expect one of two things, either Halo 6 will be teased or they'll show off a completely new IP to showcase its huge graphical potential. Think The Order 1886. I'm sure they'll announce another few games too, if they can remember to pull their heads out of their asses for long enough to announce them. Next up, Sony. I'll admit this one is a little difficult since they've either shown off or released a good chunk of their heavier hitters already, but even so there are a few things I expect to happen during their press event. The first is another revival or re-release of a classic franchise. It's no secret that a lot of gamers are becoming disillusioned with modern games and want a return of the old classics. Since the Crash reboot went over well for them, the next obvious choice is Spyro. But who knows, we may get lucky and get something a bit meatier like Blood Omen or something. The next thing I expect from Sony is a good chunk dedicated to Final Fantasy VII. Not only do I think they'll be showing off some in-game action, but I think that this is where they'll finally drop the idea of the game being multi-part. It's been two years since they teased it, and I don't think it's unreasonable or even hopeful to suggest that if it was a three-part game, we'd have seen the first by now. We'd have surely seen at least something by now. The idea of the game being episodic at this point is deader than Hitman's sale figures. Other than that though, it's kind of hard to tell. I think there's a good chance they'll show off a new IP since the Uncharted games have ended, but I guess we'll see. And lastly, Nintendo. And I expect quite a lot. Granted, we've already seen quite a lot of what's to come for the Nintendo Switch, but I can't help but feel that Nintendo still have a few surprises up their sleeve. It definitely seems like Nintendo are trying to capture a 90s feel with the Switch, so with that in mind, I personally think we're going to see a few huge 90s style reveals. But first, the eShop. It's a little bare on the Switch at the moment, so I think it's fair to expect that they'll reveal some details on the Virtual Console as well as a catalogue of games that will be available once the subscription service starts in the summer. And I also expect this catalogue to be pretty substantial. Next, Metroid. I did notice that there are some rumours going around, but I honestly personally don't put too much stock in that. It just makes sense from a business standpoint and a time standpoint. Gamers have been asking for it, there's been a reasonable amount of time since the last game, and Nintendo needs to sell the Switch. 
it'll probably be a tease, traditional or prime, but I'm pretty sure it will be there. Also, if Bethesda don't announce it, I'm sure Nintendo will. Skyrim Nintendo Edition. That's right, I absolutely expect this and I'd be surprised if they didn't. I'm thinking it'll be along the lines of the Painted World or the Shivering Isles expansion from Oblivion. A trip through Mushroom Kingdom or Hyrule with all the tongue-in-cheek references that will make you want to face desk until you really do see the Mushroom Kingdom. It makes complete sense to me, especially when you consider other multi-platform games that have been released later on a Nintendo console. I really hope I'm not wrong because I think it would be a completely wasted opportunity if it didn't happen. And finally, I really can't help but feel that Nintendo are going to reveal something massive and the only thing that makes sense to me is some kind of classic revival. Something that will make people absolutely lose it and just go crazy. Kind of like what happened when Final Fantasy VII's remake was first shown off at Sony's event in 2015. There have been rumours that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is expected to be announced at some point soon, which may also happen, but I think we're going to see something completely different. I won't say what it is because I don't want to jinx it, but you never know. Next up, I want to throw in some other predictions for various publishers that may or may not appear at these events. Firstly, I'm just going to get it out of the way, Diablo 4. I don't think it's a coincidence at all that Blizzard have been promoting Diablo 3 so much recently with the added Necromancer and the Darkening of Tristram updates. To me, it just feels like blatant, cynical advertising and an attempt to get old Diablo 2 fans on their side before they announce the new game. Next, Assassin's Creed 5, Far Cry 5, or both. It seems like there's been enough time in between these games that another mainline entry is due. Again, there have been rumours and some leaks, but I'm still sticking with what I'm thinking. With specifics to Assassin's Creed, I'd expect a modern or futuristic setting, but knowing Ubisoft, they'll drag it out another game and have it take place during the industrial age in a big metropolitan city. Ah, all the steam pipes you could ever want to climb. Hooray. I'm expecting some kind of follow-up for Resident Evil 7, an expansion or DLC. Also from Capcom, I think Deep Down is due for a comeback. Its trademark was recently renewed and I think there's a good chance we'll see it again sooner rather than later, even if it's just a tease. And finally, Square. I really can't help but feel that there's going to be something fairly big announced. They've really been on a roll recently, so it makes sense they'll try to capitalise on their recent successes by showing off something new. And again, I have a pretty good feeling that it's going to be a Nintendo exclusive. But that's pretty much it. Obviously, I'm sure we'll see other games during these press events, games that will cross over and be shown across multiple stages. And I'm sure we'll see more of Call of Duty World War 2, God of War, Kingdom Hearts, Mario Odyssey, and a lot more in greater detail as well. This was mostly just for the inevitable big reveals. Some, I think, have a better chance than others to make an appearance, but honestly, I'm fairly confident on all of them. But nothing more to do now but wait and let those rumours flood in.